Welcome back to Live Now from Fox. As you can see here, a very active night sky over there in Gaza. We see flares out there in the distance. I want to bring back into the conversation retired Marines intelligence officer Hal Kempfer. Hal, you have been guiding us through the fact that in just a few hours is when that ceasefire is supposed to begin. But as you just saw in that live picture, the fighting is going to continue a pretty heavily as we get there. I want to get into some of the math when it comes to the hostages being released because I know they're going to be released in groups. They are. Uh, the math is kind of interesting. Uh, the first day uh, when this was first announced, they said 50 will be released over a four-day period. It was supposed to be 20 the first day, 10 every day after that. And then uh, the Israelis would release three Palestinian prisoners. And the uh, the Israelis that are being held are, are hostages by every definition. The, uh, the uh, Palestinians that they're releasing are prisoners. They've gone through due process. They've been convicted of various crimes. And uh, so they're releasing those as a three-to-one trade. Well, Hamas, as we've talked about before, is having a tough time locating uh, where all the hostages are. Their, uh, their, their administrative acumen is a little lacking in this. Um, their ability to figure out, to, to basically communicate and keep track of everybody. So they've been tracking down not only within Hamas, but with a couple of other groups, most notably the Islamic Jihad, to find out who they have. So they're going to exchange 13 hostages on the first day, and in exchange, um, that there'll be 39 prisoners, Palestinian prisoners, that are uh, released uh, to the West Bank. Now, what will happen is Hamas will turn them over to the International Red Cross. The Red Cross will then uh, transport them to the Rafah Gate, which is the gate that goes to Egypt. When they get to the Rafah Gate, They'll be met with uh, Israeli officials, IDF, that will absolutely verify without doubt as to who the hostages are that are to be released, that are being released. At that point, once they've verified that it's this person, the family will be formally notified that their, uh, that their loved one has been uh, released. Then they will be transported by helicopter to about eight or one of eight or 10 hospitals uh, throughout Israel where special uh, reception has been uh, set up to to medically evaluate them, to give them any treatment that's necessary, uh, make sure that they're taken care of. Also, a lot of concern about their psychological well-being, uh, considering what they've just gone through. They will have a full-time social worker uh, that will be there uh, constantly with them to help them through any crisis uh, while they're coming back, when they're at the hospitals, that will be when the family members can actually uh, reunite uh, with their uh, loved ones there. Uh, although they're going to be under close care and scrutiny for some time, uh, this is an incredibly traumatic experience. And to say that the, uh, the hostages are by and large suffering from various levels of post-traumatic stress disorder would be a, a bit of an understatement considering what they've been through especially the, the children who are having such a tough time processing not only what's happened to them, but in some cases, like the, uh, the, the, the three-year-old girl that we hope will be amongst the first released, not only has she gone through all of this, but her parents were killed in the October 7th attack. So she's, you know, she's going to need a lot of care uh, uh, to help her get back to some semblance of normalcy after this is all done, but all of them are going to have to have a great deal of care to work on that. Uh, and so that's what's going to happen in terms of the prisoner exchange. Interesting uh, little side note, uh, this was all announced and the and the uh, International Red Cross came out and said, nobody had talked to us about what we're doing. And then they turned around and said, we're ready to do it, but nobody had actually coordinated. So I thought that was kind of interesting that the Qataris, Hamas, the Israelis, even the U.S. were all making these plans of what the International Red Cross is going to do, but nobody had actually bothered to coordinate with the International Red Cross to explain exactly what their role would be, even though that is what they're going to do, and they've said they're going, they have no problems doing that. Um, now, the other side of this is at 7 a.m. is when the, the ceasefire, the truce, or pause actually begins. So that will be in effect during the day but the release, the exchange of, of hostages to prisoners doesn't happen until 4 p.m. their time in the afternoon. So there's this long period of time 
where uh, Hamas and, and the IDF will be assessing whether this is actually working as planned uh, prior to any exchange of hostages and prisoners. Also during that time, uh, in southern Lebanon, as I mentioned before, there'll be no overflights, no drones or anything flying over. Uh, in in northern um, Gaza, from 10 to 4 in the afternoon, there'll be no overflights, but there will be drones flying uh, for surveillance purposes uh, outside of those times. Although Gaza is a very narrow strip of land, so the ability to look down uh, from surveillance, airborne surveillance platforms into Gaza pretty easy to do, not to mention all the satellite capability and other things that are out there. So I don't think that's going to be a huge hindrance in terms of being able to uh, surveil what's happening uh, across the board, uh, although it would be nice to have some tactical drones that could get a little bit closer to the ground into some of those uh, areas, those neighborhoods and stuff to look what's going on in a particular alley or street or something like that. However, uh, it is the arrangement that's been met. The big thing, though, is there's about, I think, 300 trucks lined up today to deliver uh to deliver aid and that's going to make a huge impact on the humanitarian side as you know huge humanitarian need uh with all the displaced palestinians that had to move from the north to the south and then some of them moving from parts of the south to other parts of the south so it's going to bring in tremendous aid there's been a uh, uh jordanian field hospital there's a couple of other field hospitals being set up in the south there's some fuel coming in to include uh oil for cooking, uh, so cooking fuel uh, will be coming in as well. That'll get those generators going. Uh, hopefully there'll be stuff where they can purify the water. Water's been a huge problem there, uh, contaminated water, and, uh, and, and start to address some of these humanitarian concerns. In the agreement, the agreement is 200 trucks a day are allowed to go in, although I understand the first day there might be more than 200 that actually go in there. And, uh, and so there's a lot going on even before the uh the the hostages and prisoner exchange takes place in the afternoon hal i do want to bring up uh, this other topic that you did have mentioned to me before the idf saying that the operation against hamas it will continue quote forcefully once this truce is over starting friday morning and then you had mentioned to me that this all has elements of psychological warfare if you can just explain that to our viewers here absolutely uh net yeah. Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, other members of, of the uh, of, of the Israeli IDF and the Israeli uh, cabinet, if you will, made it very clear that once this truce period is supposed to go for four days is over, uh, then they were are going to go back to engaging in major warfare uh, operations. Now, there is part of this agreement does allow a continuance of this pause, as long as Hamas is releasing ten hostages a day. They get a day of of uh, of a cessation of, of fighting. In other words, a, a ceasefire or a pause for that day. So if they keep up the ten hostages a day, it could go on not just four days. It could go on five, six, seven. I think eight days was probably the outside that we might see. It's possible it could go on further. There has been some very hopeful discussion that they could get a lot more hostages out. Uh, I believe if it goes over seven days, there'll probably be some renegotiation in terms of what this will look like. Um, and I, I, my guess would be that Israel might demand uh, more hostages get released per day in order to maintain the pause in military operations. Uh, one thing they said today was that they said uh, the, the Israeli defense minister said that uh, basically uh, he sees this, this fighting going on for a couple of months. And that's where you kind of get into psychological warfare. Uh, Hamas has to figure out, do they want to immediately go back into what would be a couple months more fighting? And the reality is that this was so tough. I mean, it was weeks and weeks and weeks of very intense negotiations. Some of the negotiations that were going on just prior to the announcement of this deal uh, the, the the negotiators themselves were lucky to get two or three hours of sleep per night. They were working till two in the morning, and then they were back doing stuff at 4 a.m. So they would lie down for, I think they closed their eyes for two hours, get up, and they were back working again. So it gives you an idea of the intensity of what was going on in Qatar in order to uh, arrange this. Uh, but everyone has made it pretty clear that once this one's done, it's uh, less likely they'll ever see something like this. 
The other thing is once you see a pause or a ceasefire, it is difficult to not not operationally so much, but politically, it's difficult to go back and start start the war fighting again. And and that's what they have to look at is that uh um you know Hamas is gonna have to figure that out as well. Israel's gonna have to figure that out, what it'll look like to start the war fighting again. My guess is that when it does turn back on, if it does, unless something truly amazing does happen on the diplomatic front, uh, that it would be extremely intense and that Israel will want to prosecute as much territory, go after, uh, basically uncover as much territory and prosecute as many targets as they possibly could in a short amount of time frame to eliminate Hamas and PIJ, Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Uh, from their positions, because they don't want this thing to go on any longer than it has to. Uh, it, it, all things being said, they would very much like to see this be a, a much shorter active war and uh, go into what are essentially sometimes called mopping up operations afterwards, and then deal more forthrightly with the humanitarian concerns of the displaced civilian population. Hal Kempfer, retired Marines intelligence officer. Always a pleasure to have you here at Live Now from Fox. Of course, this is a developing story. In the next few hours is when that ceasefire is going to commence officially. And a few hours after that is when we should start seeing those hostages being exchanged between Israel and Hamas. We are going to welcome you back as we continue to cover all of these developments here. But for the time being, I do appreciate you coming on here, uh, breaking this down ahead of what's going to be a big event in the middle of this war. And, sir, I hope you have a happy Thanksgiving.